Thank you ever so much, Paul. It's really good to be with you all today. And I hope you're ready, geared up for this next part of our Unify series. Last week, we had Pentecost Sunday, and we looked at how that the uh, people of God, the disciples, they gathered together, 120 of them in the upper room, to pray, to seek God, to believe expectantly for the promise of the Holy Spirit to be poured out. And God met them where they were at. The Holy Spirit was poured out. They all received the Holy Spirit and they all began to speak uh, in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. And I want to say this, there is still a place for the gathering of believers. Uh, God still wants us to be believers that will gather together. And the Bible says that where two or three are gathered in his name, he's there in the midst. So we know that God's always there. But there is something powerful that happens when we get together physically as well. And there's lots of different ways that we can do that. I know in this season, we've been leaning more into um, online. And of course, things are beginning to shift and pivot now. And we're, uh, it's been great meeting up over the past couple of weeks with some people after the service um, for tea and coffee in the church gardens. And that's been great. And maybe for, for some of you, it might be a case of inviting some people to to gather together, you know, if you feel graced to invite people into your home or to a coffee shop or even, you know, watch the service, you know, in the park or on the beach, perhaps. But start gathering with other believers and there's tremendous power in that. You know, uh, today in the church, they call it Trinity Sunday. And so we're going to be looking at a bit of the Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit is when the church remember the, the, the unity of, and the community that exists with uh, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Today, we're also going to look a little bit about the benefits of speaking in tongues, because I know that that's something that uh, many of you have questions about, you want to learn more about, you, you want to find more out about. And so we're going to jump in and look at seven benefits to speaking in tongues. Now, first of all, I want to say this. Whether you speak in tongues or not, it does not mean, you know, if, you know, for those who do speak in tongues, they're more superior. Not at all. We're, it's all equal value. Uh, we're all loved. We're all accepted. We're all, you know, chosen by God. And uh, but this is something that we have available to us as believers. And hopefully this for those of you that haven't spoken in tongues yet, it's going to kind of stir up this passion, this desire of, hey, I want to speak in tongues. This is really powerful. This is biblical stuff. This is what's part of my inheritance. Uh, for those of you that already speak in tongues, then hopefully it's just going to encourage you and inspire you to keep on keeping on praying in the Holy Spirit, knowing that it has uh, phenomenal power and can make a big, big difference. So what's the first benefit of speaking in tongues? Well, let me just say this. There's hundreds, if not thousands of benefits, but today we're just going to look at seven. First one, I want to say this is the first benefit to speaking in tongues is that when you pray in tongues, you pray the perfect prayer. You pray the perfect prayer. Have you ever been in a situation where you didn't know what to pray. Maybe there was a situation, a scenario that was panning out and you're like, I don't know whether I should go this way or that way. Or, uh, you know, do I go through that door? Do I close that door? I'm not sure like what I should do. We've all had, you know, moments in our life where we came to that kind of why in the road, uh, fork in the road. And we we're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how I should be praying. Well, this is the thing that when we pray in tongues, we are not praying with our own intelligence. We're not praying with our own smartness. But when we pray in the Holy Spirit, what we're doing is we're actually tapping into the unlimited wisdom of God. We're, we're hitting the bullseye every time. So when we pray in, in the Holy Spirit, when we pray in tongues, what we're doing is we're, we're hitting that bullseye and we're saying, God, it's not about what I want. It's about what you want. And so this is something that's really powerful. We're using this heavenly language. You know, in England, what do we speak? We speak English. Well, most of us speak in English. Uh, in France, what do they speak? They speak French. In Germany, what do they speak? They speak German. In Spain, what language do they speak? They're Spanish. Well, you know what? In heaven, there is a universal language as well. 
It's called the language of the Holy Spirit. It's called tongues. And it's a, it's a gift that is available to all believers. And last week we looked at, didn't we, how the, the Tower of Babel, there was such an impact when people who weren't even being godly, they're actually being very sinful and being very prideful and wanting to build this tower to reach heavens on their own uh, efforts. They wanted to be as God themselves. And uh, they wanted to you know, build up their own fame and elevate their own name. But they had one language and they had one purpose. And God said that anything would be possible for them. He realized the power of unity and we can leverage it for good or we can leverage it for um, evil. So God scattered those people around the, the earth and he you know, divided the tongues up so that their different languages came into being on the earth. But through the gift of tongues, through the day of Pentecost, there, there's that promise of, of Joel 2 uh, was fulfilled that, you know, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Um, he poured out his Holy Spirit and people were given, the people of God were giving a universal language again, the language of the Holy Spirit. So when we pray in the Holy Spirit, we pray the perfect prayer. Let's have a look at a passage of Scripture. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2 says this, For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. And in the Amplified Version, it actually says this, secret truths and hidden things. So again, sometimes there are things that are hidden. Sometimes there's things that are a mystery. Sometimes there are, are things that are mysteries that we don't get. We, we're not sure what to do. But when we pray in the Holy Spirit, we pray the perfect prayer because it's the Holy Spirit flowing, moving through us as we step out in faith and trust Him. Point number two, second benefit of speaking in tongues is it builds you up and increases your strength. It builds you up and it strengthens you. Okay, it increases your strength. So let's have a look at our passage of scripture to support this in Jude 1, uh, 20. It says, but you, beloved, building yourselves up. I've underlined that bit in, in my uh, translation. This is the new King James Version. Building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. And I've underlined that bit as well. So here we're seeing this strengthening. We're, we're seeing that, that we can increase our strength. You know, houses, properties, when they're left to their own devices, uh, eventually start to become worn down. You know, they, they start to um, be in disrepair. And, you know, sometimes our lives can be like this, can't they? You know, we can start to get a bit run down. But when we pray in the Holy Spirit, we build our strength. And it's like the Holy Spirit comes in and renovates our lives and reinforces where there are areas uh, that are struggling. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14 uh, and verse 4 says this. Anyone who speaks in tongues edifies... Um, and strengthens themselves. And so we can know here that when we speak in tongues, we're edifying, we're strengthening, we're building um, ourselves up. Hey, hey, there's times in my life where I feel tired. Anyone else relate to that? You know, there's been a few days this week where I've just felt really, really tired. A few people even said, Daniel, you look quite tired. I think, you know, yeah, I actually do feel a little bit tired. And sometimes it's not always physical. Sometimes it's mental. Sometimes it's spiritual, emotional. And, and this has been a very challenging season for, for us, hasn't it? But here, you know, when we pray in the Holy Spirit, we're able to edify, to strengthen, to build ourselves up. And it's a bit like a mobile phone. You know, this mobile phone of mine, uh, when I use it, eventually the battery starts to um, run out until eventually it switches off. And um, I'm not able to use it again unless I plug it into the power source, plug it into the electricity, and it recharges. Well, when we pray in the Holy Spirit, kind of see it a bit like that. It's like plugging into the power source, the greatest power source of all, God Almighty, who is, you know, omnipotent, 
Uh, he is so powerful. And we plug in and we're able to energize and it helps us to be able to keep on keeping on. So uh, number three, third benefit to speaking um, in tongues here is it enables you to get more done uh, in less time. How many of you would like to get more done in less time? Like, I know I do. There's, you know, sometimes I have those days where I'm like, you know, where did the time go? It just seemed to run away. And, uh, you know, we don't always get everything done on our things to do list. We all have days like that, don't we? I remember John Joss, my good friend, who I know that some of you know, John. Um, I'd asked John to lead a, a Friday morning hour of power prayer meeting. And he decided that he wanted to share about Holy Spirit and about the gift of tongues. Now, John, for those of you who know John, John, when he was working, was a carpenter. And so he would use a, a handsaw. So he came along. It was only a small meeting. I think there was maybe, I don't know, 10 or 12 of us that were gathering for prayer. And he got out his handsaw and he said, you know, when I was working, you know, I used this handsaw. And it was really helpful for cutting wood. And, um, you know, you needed a, a, a lot of kind of um, effort, you know, with the elbow and your arm and making sure you're getting that line straight and, but then he, what he did next is he then got pulled this mystery bag out. And uh, out of the bag, he pulled out this electric saw. And he plugged it into the power saws. And he turned it on and he revved up. And he said, but you know what? When I got one of these, it was so much easier to cut. And actually, he got a you know, much neater finish as well. Well, hey, we can just stick with the hand saw. Um, and it can be really effective. But it's like God's given us these other tools. He's given us these supernatural tools that if we plug into the power source of the Holy Spirit, actually, we can end up doing a lot more with a lot less. We can actually find that our time, you know, in our time that we're able to see so much more because it's not so much about what we're doing, but it's about what the Holy Spirit is doing in and through Ah, so we'll get a lot more done in less time. We see this with Peter uh, in the Bible, who uh, was very cowardly before he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And, you know, he, he was well-meaning. I mean, he said, Jesus, I'm, I'm never going to deny you. I'm always going to stick by you. I'll never back down. Jesus was like, yeah, Peter, actually, you know, you're going to deny me uh, before the cock crows twice. You have denied me three times. I no, no, I'm not going to do that. But Jesus knows us better than we know ourselves. And many of you will be familiar with the story of Peter. He, you know, couldn't even preach to a little girl who was saying, hang on, uh, weren't you with Jesus and his followers? Aren't you one of them? And he's like, no, no, I'm not. And he became very timid and fearful and cowardly really he couldn't preach to a little girl about his Jesus yet fast forward Peter's filled with the Holy Spirit he speaks in tongues he comes out of that upper room and what was the difference suddenly he preaches with this boldness with this courage with this confidence which he hadn't had before and 5,000 people get saved I mean that's not bad is it for a first sermon but what was the difference this is the difference between Operating in your own strength, trying to do it in your own might, and operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what Peter did. And he, in a sense, you know, it was one sermon, and yet it was far-reaching, had a big impact. And that's what we can do when we pray in the Holy Spirit and operate through the Holy Spirit. Number four, fourth benefit to praying in tongues. It empowers you to be more effective in your witness. How many of you want to be more effective as a witness for Christ? Yeah, I know I do. And there's always room for improvement, isn't there? Um, let's have a look at Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And it says this, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So here, the promise is that we're going to be filled with the Spirit and that it's going to empower us to be better witnesses and that we're going to be reaching out locally 
regionally, nationally, and even globally. As Christians, we should be reaching out on all of those levels. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that we will be visiting all of those places. But here's the great thing about prayer, is that through prayer, you can go and impact places that you might not be able to go physically. You can reach, you can access, you know, into very dangerous areas through praying. Prayer gives us access to all areas. So we should be praying for our brothers and sisters worldwide. We should be reaching out, sharing the gospel. And of course, through modern technology and even through, you know, online media like this, we're able to reach the ends of the earth. Number five, fifth benefit, speaking in tongues. It's a sign to the unbeliever. It's a sign to the unbeliever. Now, let me say this. The gift of tongues is multifaceted. It functions in different ways. So when we think about the gift of tongues, don't just think of it kind of as a kind of a 2D shape, but recognize that there's different ways that it can kind of manifest and be used. In the same way that, you know, if I was to say about prayer in English uh, or pray, prayer in whatever your native language is, that there's different types, isn't there? Like there's a prayers of confession, there's you know prayers of repentance, there's prayers of thanksgiving, there's prayers of supplication where you're asking God for stuff, there's um, prayers of worship, there's uh, prayers of agreement, there's prayers of warfare. I mean, you know, there's lots of different types of prayer. It's still prayer, but actually it can be used um, in different ways. And uh, when when the Holy Spirit was poured out, um, it was a sign to the unbeliever when they began to speak in tongues. Because what had happened is people come from around the, the, the world had come come to gather uh, in Jerusalem, and uh, people began hearing witnessing that these 120 started speaking these different languages, this unknown language. But actually, what they were doing is they were hearing it in their own in their own tongue. So they're like, what? They were perplexed. They were amazed. They were astounded. They were bowled over. They're like, what? This is supernatural. What's going on here is super. How do they know our languages? But God was using by the Spirit of God to translate it in such a way that they understood what the Holy Spirit was wanting to say to them. So it's a powerful sign um, that is a powerful witness. And I think I shared this testimony with you before, but when I was in Colombia ministering, I was speaking at a men's event, and after the event, they asked if I would pray for the men. And uh, so myself and some of the other guys, we were just praying for the different guys that were there. You know, and in, in Colombia, you know, when you say who want, you know, who wants prayer, you know, you don't get one or two come forward. They all come forward. They all want prayer. Uh, there was this real hunger for God, and so I started praying for them in English. I had a translator with me, and just began praying. And after praying for a number of men, I kind of felt like. I just want to freshen up a bit and just start praying in tongues. So I just started praying in tongues over some of these men. And I noticed that the interpreter was like suddenly like turning around, like looking across at me like this. He kept like turning and I'm thinking, what, what is his problem? Like what's going on with him? And he just kept looking at me really strangely. And um, anyway, the next day we were out for lunch and um, I was sat next to him at the table. And uh, he said, did you know what was happening yesterday after the meeting when you were praying for people? I said, no, no. Well, like, why were you looking at me strangely? And he went, you were speaking perfectly in their own language. And he said, I know you and I know that you don't know the language. So he said, I was like really amazed of like, what's going on? Like, how how are you speaking in their language? He said, so that was the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's not to say, hey, look at me and how great I am. It's not about me. It's about the Holy Spirit and what God can do and did through me, God can do in and through you as well. See, this is the Holy Spirit. This is the power that one of the benefits of speaking in the gift of tongues. It can be a sign to the unbeliever and to the believer as well. Uh, number six, uh, speaking in tongues also can be an act of praise and worship. I love to sing uh, uh, during praise and worship times. Sometimes it's good not to just always follow the track and, you know, sing in English. Sometimes it's good to mix it up a bit and speak in tongues or even in those interludes or in those kind of bits in between or the instrument. Just pray and singing in the Holy Spirit. It's amazing. It's a beautiful thing. 
actually, if you go on YouTube and you type in, you know, Christian worship, praying in tongues, you actually find some examples. And I know in a lot of worship songs, even now, you'll find that, you know, it sounds like people speaking in a foreign language. But what they're doing is they're singing, they're worshiping God through the gift of tongues. And then number seven, seventh benefit for speaking in tongues is it's a weapon for spiritual warfare. We are in a battle. And we have been given weapons. We've been given tools. In Ephesians 6, it talks about this and about the spiritual armor that we have. And one of the weapons that you and I have been given in our toolbox is the gift of speaking in tongues. Now, I don't have a lot of bad dreams. I actually sleep really well. I sleep like a baby and often have just, you know, peaceful dreams, uh, good dreams. Uh, but occasionally there are times it's almost like layers of pull back and it's like I'm uh, made aware of kind of what's going on in the spirit realm and there have been some times where I've had some really like intense like demonic encounters where I felt like really attacked and um, what what in those times where I've come across the demonic like it's like a fight or flight mode and I just like run at these things like speaking in tongues I don't even think about it it was just like a natural fight response in me I charge at these things, just speaking passionately, intently in the Holy Spirit. And you know what happens? Every time they flee, they disappear, they cannot handle it. God gives me the victory through Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Laura's, you know, number of times where she's, you know, woken me up and she's saying like, you're speaking really loud in tongues, uh, it, it, you know, because it was so real, it was so intent, but Here's the thing, speaking in tongues is a powerful weapon that we can use in spiritual warfare as well. In Psalm 8 verse 2, it says this, Out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. We can silence the enemy. We can silence the avenger. We can use the gifts that God has given to us. And not just tongues the full range of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which are available to every single believer. Let me say this to you. If you're a believer, okay, you've invited God into your life, you now have the Holy Spirit living within you, okay? You you know, you're born again. You're a new creation. You're one with God. He's in you. You are in him, okay? So there's this oneness, this unify, this unity that's there, okay? So you're one with God. Now, let me ask you another question then. How many gifts of the Holy Spirit does God have? (laughs) How many gifts of the Holy Spirit does the Holy Spirit have? All of them. Well, if you're one with God and His Holy Spirit and the Father and the Son, if you're one with them and they're in you and you're in them, well, you have all the gifts that are available to you as well. And this was the, 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 the revelation that the Apostle Paul started getting. He said, it's no longer I who live. It's Christ that lives in me now. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So we've got to shift away from what we can do. And we've got to get the focus on him. Focus on God. God can do all things. And God lives in us. And let's allow him to live through us as well. So we've got the Holy Spirit available to us. And that includes the gift of tongues and all of the other gifts. Okay. Um, Now, when Christians, when I speak to Christians that perhaps haven't spoken in tongues, I kind of like to think of it like this, because if you're if you are a true Christian, you have the gift of tongues. So for some people, it's like, oh, I'm praying to get the gift. No, no, you've already got the gift of tongues. Okay, but I want you to think about it this way. It's like having a really amazing app on your phone, but not knowing about it or maybe never opening it and using it. So, you know, I've got lots of different apps that came preloaded here on this mobile phone. Sometimes my kids install apps on there. Uh, normally games. So I've got these apps on there. Now, I have that ability. I've got the software installed. But does that mean that I'm that I'm using that? Not necessarily. So is it possible to have an app but not function in it, not use it, not, not enjoy its benefit? Yeah, of course it is. This, this happens all the time that we have some amazing apps, you know, on our phones, on our device, on our tech, you know, with our technology. But it doesn't necessarily mean that we're using it. So when when we're Christians and we're sort of saying, oh, you know, I, you know, I want the gift of tongues. 
I, you know, I would say often like you've already got it, but it's about opening it up. It's about functioning and, and learning, getting that revelation of what God's already given to you as part of your inheritance. It's about learning about who you are in Christ, through Christ. So I want to encourage you, you know, pray and thank God for it. Thank God. Thank you, God, that you have put your Holy Spirit within me. Thank you that the Holy Spirit lives and dwells in me. I have the gifts of the Spirit, the full range of the gifts of the Spirit that are available to me. And that includes the gift of tongue. Now, um, I think that for some Christians, um, we, we miss out on speaking in tongues because it's almost like thinking that the Holy Spirit's going to overtake us and possess us and we won't be able to stop it and he will you know, just force us to... Guys, that's not how it works with speaking in tongues. I think sometimes we almost think that you know, we can't, we, we, it will be unstoppable, we won't be able to... No, I love, I love Paul Cowdery's message last Sunday night where he was talking about the faucet, the, the, the tap. He was saying it's like, you know, the Holy Spirit, the water is there. But we, we have to do our bit in turning the tap to release the, the water. And this is how it is like with the Holy Spirit. Like you've got all of the gifts of the Spirit. It's like you've got the gift of, you know, wisdom. So you might be sat with someone. They're sharing a dilemma, a situation. And um, instantly, like, you just know, like, how to answer. You know, like. The wisdom, like, what's the right thing to say in that moment? But the Holy Spirit doesn't, like, start, rah, 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 you know, forcing your lips open to suddenly start sharing this wisdom. Does It doesn't happen like that, does it? it? You open your mouth and you say something. And as you do, it begins to flow. And so that's how it is. We have to kind of act. We have to say something. And as we do that, the Holy Spirit begins to flow um, in and through us. So the water's there, the spirit is there. We've just got to turn the tap and step out and speak in tongues. Now in the book of Acts, it tells us that, that, the, that the people spoke in tongues, not the Holy Spirit. The people spoke in tongues, not the Holy Spirit. So we have, there's something we have to do to step out. The Holy Spirit gave them utterance, but they had to step out and open their mouths to say something. Now, some of us are waiting on God to do something, and all the meanwhile, God's waiting on us to do something. So we have to do our part in stepping out. And, and as we step out in faith, I believe that God will give us the right words to say. You know, when you got saved, God didn't force you to say anything with your lips. You turned on the tap by praying a prayer of your own free will, and his saving grace was poured into your life. And you were saved. When, when we open our mouths and we begin to speak, God will give us the words to say. We don't need to think about it. We just need to flow with it and trust in God. Remember, it's a language of the Holy Spirit. It's not about the eloquence of words. It's not about intellect. It's not about us understanding it. Don't worry about how it sounds. Don't worry about sometimes feeling a bit foolish. Because sometimes there's a pride issue. We don't want to feel or, 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 or look foolish or sound foolish. And there was an element on the day of Pentecost. Some people were like, those guys have been drinking. They must be drunk. So there was an element that some people were mocking as the power of God. But it says that God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Don't worry about how it sounds. Just keep your heart focused on God. Keep your heart focused on the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, for some of you, you might say, but, but pastor, what about if I step out and pray in tongues, but it's more me than God? Okay, anyone, you ever heard anyone sort of ask that question? Well, I believe that the most important thing is your, your motive. Like, what's your heart? Like, if your heart's right and your heart wants to bless God, wants to glorify God, that's what's most important. If your heart and your motive is right, God will inspire the words that come out of your mouth as you begin to speak. Now think about a child learning, you know, language for the first time. And, you know, they might get one or two words. And sometimes, you know, when you start out in tongues, it might be one or two words that you get. But as you practice, as you stir up the gifts within you, then more and more will begin to flow and your vocabulary and the spirit will begin to, to broaden. Okay, so it's important that we practice the gift of tongues. 
and uh, as we practice we will become more fluent. Now you might find it helpful putting some worship music on if you're wanting them to manifest and stir up this gift and you know you are a believer. If you're not a believer, if you've not received the Holy Spirit, invite God into your life. It's the best decision that you can ever make. But if you have got God in your life, you've accepted Christ in, then perhaps a prayer, you might want to pray something along these lines. Father God, I yield my tongue to you. Inspire me by your Holy Spirit to speak in a heavenly language. As I step out in faith, may I release the heavenly utterance. And then just go for it. Just just begin to speak. And as you do, I believe God will fill your mouth. But sometimes it is helpful having some worship music on, getting in that flow. But don't be so worried about the, how it sounds, the words. Be worried about your heart, your motive, focus in on him. The Apostle Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 14, 5. I wish that you all spoke with tongues. Wow, this is coming from one of the spiritual heavyweights, the Apostle Paul, saying, I wish that you all spoke in tongues. Now, some Christians will say, well, this means that not all believers can speak in tongues. Note that here he's saying he wished that all spoke in tongues. He did not say that he wished that all could speak with tongues. Is it possible to have the gift and not use it? Yes, it is. Remember about the app on your phone. Can you have the software installed uh, and yet not use it? Yes, it happens all of the time. You know, every believer you could say, uh, you know, has the ability to worship God. You know, God's desire is that we would all worship him. But just because you can doesn't mean you will. God wants us all to forgive. I wish that everyone forgave other people and let things go. Okay, I wish everyone served. OK, but that doesn't mean everyone is going to serve. It doesn't mean everyone is going to forgive. So we have the ability to do it. But that doesn't mean that we're necessarily choosing to walk out, to step up, step out in faith on that. So you have the ability. It's about stepping out, walking um, in that. Now, there are many gifts of the Holy Spirit, so it's important. Don't limit yourself just to one. Don't restrict yourself to one. Go after them all, because if we've got Christ living in us, then we have that full range available to us. There are many other gifts, gifts of wisdom, words of knowledge, discernment, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, interpretation of tongues. There's a lot of other gifts that are available to us. And I want to encourage you, go after them all. As Paul said, eagerly crave and desire them. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14.1, this is the Apostle Paul, his encouragement. And he says this, pursue love. And desire spiritual gifts. Here he's, he's being really intentional. Saying, guys, come on. Crave them. Go after them. Pursue them. But especially that you may prophesy. So again, he's highlighting another spiritual gift here. Are you pursuing love? Are you pursuing the spiritual gifts? Are you being proactive? Are you being intentional about that? Are you being hungry for... For more of God and walking in the provision, the inheritance that he has for you. I want to encourage you to go after it, to function in what God has given to you. Psalm 37 verse 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So as you're desiring the gifts, and here it's saying if you delight yourself in God, he will give you the desires of your heart then you know that God's word is true. We can have confidence in his word. That word delight, when you look it up in the Hebrew, you get this word anag in the Hebrew, and it means to be soft and pliable towards God. In other words, don't be rigid and resistant okay, towards God, but be receptive, be soft, be open to him and his, the leading uh, of his spirit. In Luke Verse uh, chapter 11, verse 9 to 13, it says, this is Jesus. And he said, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For end everyone who asks receives. And the person who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. If a son asks for bread, from any father among you, will he give him a stone? 
Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? We serve a good Father. God is so good. And and here we see a, a, a promise, but that has conditions. Sometimes we're like, we just want to take a promise, but we don't want the condition. No, here, how do we receive? We've got to ask. (laughs) How do we see something open? You know, we have to knock. How do we find? There has to be an element of seeking. Now, sometimes God will just give give us stuff without us asking because he knows what we need. Like I say, with the Holy Spirit, we've already received that anyway. But here we're seeing that, that there is something about us asking, knocking and seeking. Okay, so maybe it's asking God, help me to step out in faith, to stir up the gifts of God that are with it. Teach me. You know, I think it's good to pray, God, fill me afresh with the Holy Spirit, because we're leaky vessels. That's a good thing. We should be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. We can ask that. We can ask God, fill me afresh with the Spirit. Teach me, God, to operate in the full range of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's something that's really, really uh, helpful. And then, you know, uh, Psalm 89, verse 34 says, My covenant I will not break, nor alter the words that have gone out of my lips. You know, we can have confidence knowing that God honors his word. Now, we're just as we're coming into to a winding down, I've got a few more scriptures for you, just as we unpack a little bit about the Trinity, as we're on Trinity Sunday, celebrating Father, Son, Holy Spirit, celebrating the community. Uh, you know, Jesus prayed in John 17 that we would be one as the, the universal capital C church, that we would be one as he's one with the Father. And the Father is one with the Holy Spirit as well. And, you know, we see this picture uh, of of the Trinity. I don't know if we've got this picture. I did send one over. Have we got a picture that we've got on the screen of the Trinity? And there's, there is a, a picture of a triangle. If not, we might be able to flash it up later on. But the Father, the Holy Spirit, uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they are one, um, but they're also three distinct. And so, you know, this whole concept of the Trinity. Now, actually, I don't know if you knew this, but Trinity is not actually mentioned in the Bible. So the word Trinity you can't find in the Bible, but the concept is in the Bible and we see it throughout. And we're going to look at a few passage of scripture just to support this. Let's have a look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and it says this, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now when you look at that word God here in Genesis book of beginning Uh, When you look at that word God and you look at it in the Hebrew, the original language, you get this word Elohim. And Elohim is not a singular word. It's a plural word. And a plural means more than one. Okay, so when it talks about God, it's it's more than one Elohim. It means divine ones, supreme rulers, judges. Okay, it's the Trinity. It's talking right here, here in that place in Genesis 1, 1. We see the Trinity in that word Elohim, and we see the Spirit of God hovering over the face of the deep. The Holy Spirit, the Ruah of God is the Hebrew word that's used there. In Colossians 1, 16 uh, and 17 and jumping into 19, it says this, For through him, this is talking about Jesus, God created everything in heaven, heavenly realms and on the earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. For God, in all of his fullness, was pleased to live in Christ. So we see this. Christ was in in God, and, and God was in Christ, and you know, the Father was in the Spirit and the Holy Spirit was in the Father. And so we see this unity. We see this this uh, aspect of the Trinity uh, panning out. In, in Genesis one twenty six, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Again, you're seeing these plural words. 
Yeah, you know, it didn't say, uh, let me make man in my image, it let us. What's that about? It's talking about the Trinity. This is the community of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Where else do we see the Trinity? We'll look at a few other passages as we as we come into a close. Matthew uh, 3, 16 and 17, but when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were opened. Uh, to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, uh, alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Voice of a Father. So here we see Jesus' baptism. We see Jesus going down into the waters of baptism. We see the Holy Spirit descending like a dove. We hear the voice of the Father saying, This is my Son. I'm really pleased with him. We see the Trinity in that scene. Matthew 28, the Great Commission, uh, verse 18 to 20. Uh, Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me on heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the, come on, help me out here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things I've commanded with you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So here we're being taught, Jesus is saying, he's teaching this concept of the Trinity and that we're to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Two more scriptures and then we're done for today. 2 Corinthians 13, 14, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, that's the Father, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. This was a, a, a typical greeting or you know closing of a message from Paul he's he's incorporating that trinity language uh, in how he was interacting with the community in Corinth and then finally John 14 verse 7 to 9 if you had known me this is Jesus he's saying if you'd known me you would know that my father also and from now on you know him and have seen him and Philip said to him Lord show us the father and it's sufficient for us and Jesus said to him have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So again, when we see Jesus, we see the Father. We see the Spirit of God. God is three, and yet he is one. And he is this perfect picture of what it means to be unified. And where there is unity, God commands the blessing. God wants us to be a Trinitarian people that we worship God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit moves through us, that we function in the full range of the gifts of the Spirit. And we have been given all of these gifts that are available to us to help with the edifying of the church and the advancing of his kingdom. Well, I hope that you found this teaching helpful today. And uh, I'm going to pray for you. And I want to encourage you, if you've never given your heart to God, I want to encourage you right now just to pray this very simple prayer. Uh, with me from your heart and know that in this moment that you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. You'll be filled with the fullness of all that God has for you. So pray these words after me from your heart right now. Father God, I recognize I'm not perfect. I have made mistakes. Please forgive me of all sin. Please come into my life by the power of your Holy Spirit. Fill me afresh. Fill me to overflowing with your Holy Spirit. May I function in the full range of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I give you my life. I believe in Jesus. I believe he's the Son of God. I believe that he rose again. Help me to grow in my relationship with you, God, to love you and to love other people. In Jesus' name, amen. Father God, I just thank you for every believer, every person, believer, unbeliever, seeker, doubter. I pray for every person that's watching this broadcast. Touch them right now by the power of your Holy Spirit. May they come to know you as their personal Lord and Savior. And Lord, as we go out the rest of our day, may you stir up the gifts of God within us. And may we function in the fullness of all that you have provided. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ the Son, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.